Inspiration with Roti Me a day do call. It's a brand new day. It's another opportunity for you to step up your game, for you to correct your hair, or for you to tell the world that you are the one that you are looking for. How's everybody doing? Wherever you are around the world, if you are listening to me, this is two minutes, minutes to five a.m. Central Time in the United States. I'm very sure it's two minutes to six a.m. in the East Coast and uh, two minutes to three a.m. in Pacific Time. But it does not matter where you are watching from. It does not matter where you are listening from. What matters is that you are here. And for those who are here, I said, hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. And I think in Nigeria right now, it's seven hours, this is noon, if I'm right. Wow. Powerful God. So, don't forget this, everything is possible. If you are positive and you are designed for royalty, you cannot afford to settle for less. This morning, I come to check on you with a strong word. I come to check on you with a strong word to let you know that uh, life is good. But you need to take responsibility. Life is good, but you need to step out of your mediocre mentality life is good but you need to do what you have not done before i want you to know that nothing will be nothing will happen if it don't happen nothing will happen if it don't happen until you happen nothing will happen yesterday we started our 40 days prayer and fasting to start the year with and I heard in my spirit yesterday, if you ever heard me yesterday while I was ministering, in our day one of 40 days, I said, something must power something for something to run. Nothing just work by itself. Nothing just happen by itself. Everything or something must happen for something to happen. So do you want a change in your life? Do you want something different? that you've not seen before? Do you want to see something powerful, something outstanding, extraordinary? I want you to know that, hey, you need to, you need to, you need to do what? You need to do something else. It is January. It is still fresh. It is January. Your eyes has not been blotted yet. It is January that your cobweb has not filled every part of you yet. You have to sit down and tell the world what you want. Demand it. Don't assume it. Help me to put it out there. Demand it. Don't assume it. Baby assume. Adult demands. Baby assume. Adult demands. Your spirituality, you have to demand it on the altar of prayer and fasting and the study of the word of God. Your promotion, you have to demand it by serving the need of your boss. You have to demand your respect by earning it. You will be responded back with the amount of love and service that you give to people. Wherever you are around the world, this is Talk to Life. Early money, unlimited inspiration, which wrote me at Dedokun. I live to do one thing, to teach the secret things of God to men and women, to bat in them the royal mentality so they can be raised as king and queen, so they will take ownership of the world and take their world by storm. If you have been following me, today makes it two, one, nine days. We started this program on the 1st of June, 2020, and guess what? By the grace of God, we've never failed one day. Somebody say, how does that happen? I don't know, too. I showed up on the 1st of June. I thought it's going to be for 30 days, but guess what? 1st of June turns to last day of June, July, August, September, October, November, December, and this is January. We just started the 8th month, and today is the 5th day from the 8th month. If you count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, to 200, to 2, 15 to 216 to 70 to 80 to 19. 
today makes it 219. So if you think I'm not qualified to talk to you, I want you to respect the time invested to come this far. I want you to please respect uh, the investment of time, energy to come this far. If I don't know what I'm doing, if I'm not sent to be here, I wouldn't have been here. The toughness, the demand, the rigorous uh, effort that is put into this to come this far, it is worth celebrating. Yesterday, I talked about something powerful, outstanding, which I think you need to go back to the video on YouTube, type visit or revisit, sorry. If I'm right, is it visit or revisit? Okay, it's revisit. Revisit, maybe there's another opportunity. Revisit, maybe you can love your wife again. Revisit, maybe you can respect your husband again. Revisit, maybe you can correct your error. Revisit, let me tell you something. The prodigal son said, I will go. I will go. The woman with the issue of blood said, hey, if I may just. Anytime you are concluded with negative something, with a negative conclusion, I want you to revisit. it. There might be something better that is waiting for you. I don't want to go far today without prayer. So if you know or you respect prayer, please bow your head and let us pray. Our Father who has never, the one that knows what we don't know, the one that has lived what, the places we have never lived, the one that have made the conversation we are here to have, the one that have made the money that, that the, the created the money that you are, we are here to make, the one that have given us a good provision for our vision that we are here to see. I mean, the one that created us even before our birth, we celebrate you. As a person that you have given this vision, I say thank you. For those who are connected around the world, I say thank you. Lord, I pray that these few minutes, maybe 30 or 35 minutes that we're going to use together, Lord, let it be a time of investment. Let somebody be blessed. Let anyone hear me today that is only hearing me for the first time or that have heard of this guy before or that is yet to hear of me. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you meet them at the point of their need. As I'll be sharing today on the power of clarity, I pray, Lord, what you want them to hear, let them hear. If you want them to hear about blessing, let them hear it. If you want them to hear about prosperity, let them hear it. It is not about what I'm saying. It's about what you want them to hear. Therefore, Lord Jesus, I pray that they will hear you and you will change their life. And at the end of it all, they will say thank you for the time invested. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Like I said yesterday, it's about revisit, and I think there's wisdom in it for you to go back to that video. It's on Facebook page, Roti Me Ade Dokun, or I am Roti Me Ade. You can, it's on my Instagram, at, please just put those handles out. I am at Roti Me Ade at I am Roti Me Ade, Facebook page at I am Roti Me Ade, uh, I think it's on, uh, it should be on Twitter too, at I am Roti Me Ade. Wherever you are around the world, it does not matter. Let me tell you something. And I think I need to let you know this before we proceed. The world is so big now that the world has become very too small. You can be living in Australia and be connecting with somebody in Nigeria. Dubai is no more far away from England. You will not believe it. That Nigeria is now very, very close to the United States. But you have a choice not to see it. I mean, you have a choice to blind yourself to it. I mean, you have a choice to see that the place is far. I come to let you know the world is very close right now. So you have the right to leverage on it or you ignore it. Don't let me don't let somebody lie to you. Life is a choice. But the, the wise we choose right. Please, we are in Shiloh 2021, not Shiloh 2020. Let what is on there be corrected. So today, I'll be sharing with you on the subject of clarity. 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 You need to know this. Because if you don't, you will live in frustration. Because if you don't, many things that has been designed, I want to eat off. Many things that has been designed that is meant for you will be passed. To somebody else. 
The demand of life require your clarity. Help me to write it. The demand of life require your clarity. Without clarity, you can never supply the demand of life. And until the demand of life has supplied, your placement is not in view. You believe in God to start a business. You believe in God to travel around the world. You believe in God to be debt free. You believe in God to have a good children. You believe in God you know, to marry. Whatsoever you are believing God for, that, that is available. But you need to be responsible. So today, I'll be sharing with you on the subject that if you can get it, 2021 will be a, 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 a year for you. It will be not a year, it will be the year, I'm sorry, it will not be the year, it will be an ultimate year. I will say it again, 2021 will be a year for you. And I said, no, that was a mistake. It will be the year for you. And I said, no, let me take that back. It will be the ultimate year. And this subject, it is true that you can revisit something and get it right. But I want you to know why you are revisiting your life, why you are trying again, why you are trying to create that network, why you are trying to put that investment. I've come to call you for what is necessary. I call it the power of clarity. Clarity. The clarity of purpose. Bet reality in life. The clarity of purpose. Bet reality. Remove clarity from it. Reality is not in place. If you are not clear about the husband that you want to marry, if you marry money right now, a time is coming that you might be the one servicing that money. You marry a man because of money, you don't know the source of his wealth. Let me tell you something. If you marry somebody because of somebody, that shows your littleness. Help me to write it down. If you marry anybody because of what they have, if it is the Spirit of God, good. If it is the wisdom of God, good. If it is the future in Christ Jesus that you see, good. But if you marry them because of their tall, because of their six pack, because of their pancake, because of their dressing, you are very wrong. Let me tell you something. Whatsoever you celebrate in order, you have it inside of you. Whatsoever you celebrate in others, if you marry not Amri, please. Whatsoever you celebrate in others, God has planted it inside of you. Do you know why you recognize it? Do you know why you celebrate it? Do you know why you are, we are attracted to it? Because you have it in you. If it's lo somebody loves to talk, somebody loves to do this i want you to know this that you have it in you what you don't have in you you can never be attracted to maybe somebody should get that what you don't have in you you can never be attracted to your level of attraction is directly proportionate to your level of what is planted in you when it is planted in you you recognize it in others On that note, the Bible said in Genesis chapter 1, verse 4, God saw. That phrase, if you can comprehend it and wrap yourself around it, that is all you need. That phrase, if you can just embrace it, dilute it, and make it part of you, that is all you need. God saw, God saw, until you see it, it will never be yours. Mm. God saw, what you see empowers you to live. The reality is a function of clarity. Reality is a function of clarity. Until you see it, it will never be yours. God saw. 
in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, the Bible said, I return, Solomon, the preacher, in the book of Ecclesiastes, he said, I return and I saw under the sun. Until you see it, it will never be real. Let me tell you something. They can preach it to you. You can read it in a book. You can hear it from a sermon. You can listen it on the YouTube. But until you see it, it will never be yours. How will somebody speak for you for one hour and it is hard for you to speak for one minute? Why? Because you are yet to see what you are saying. When you see it, it will be. Time will not be enough for you to say it. If you can see it, it will be hard. You will run out of time to deliver it. Mm. Picture. Send word. Oh. Picture. Bombard with words. When, if you ever meet journalists, people will write for living. And if they start describing the scenario about what happened, you will be surprised that are you guys seeing the same thing because they saw what you don't see. Because they saw it. Last year, go and check it out. I wrote an article. I was placing, not comparing. I placed Jeff Bezos side by side with Bishop David Oedipo, and the Lord showed me ten forces of life that makes you unstoppable. The ten forces of life that will make you unstoppable. And one of it is the capacity to hear. But that's not what we are talking about today. So, God saw, Genesis 1, 4, Solomon saw, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 11, but let me give you to what you are very, very familiar with. A lot of people call that scripture, you know, uh, before you, in your mother's womb, I knew you and I formed you, right? And I did you to be a prophet to the nation. That's Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. But in verse 9, 10, and 11, something extraordinary happened in the conversation of Jeremiah and God. This is what happened in verse 9. I'm reading for living Bible. The Bible said, and he touched my mouth. Jeremiah was describing his experience with God. And he said, see, I have put my word in your mouth. So God said, Jeremiah, I want you to see what I did to you. What I did for you. What? He said, I have put my words in your mouth. Look at what happened. Verse 10. He said, today, your work begin to warn the nation and the kingdom of the world. In accordance with my word, spoken through your mouth, I will tear down some and destroy them. I will plant others and nurture them. I make them strong and great. Guess what happened? God said, I have touched your mouth with my words. These are the things I want you to do. And your work starts immediately. In verse 11, and the Lord said to me, what did he say? He said, look, Jeremiah, what do you see? Write this down. No matter what God has in plan for you, if you cannot see it, it will never be yours. See, therefore, claims ownership. Seeing is the force of claiming ownership. I love that. Seeing is the force of creating ownership. Clarity, if you can put it that way, is a force of creating what? Ownership. If God tells you you're going to be a millionaire until you see it, if God tells you you're going to marry until you see it, it is not yours until you see it. God said, I have done this, I have done that, this is your assignment, I want you to start now. But before God said go, he said, what do you see? Clarity. Claims ownership. Oh, oh. do you know why you are still frustrated right now? Clarity is a force of creating ownership. Do you know why you are still begging men? Never know that God has empowered you to feed men, but you are begging men for food. 
Now let me take you to the Genesis. Can we go to Genesis chapter 13, please? Genesis 13 from verse 14 to 15. I think I said it yesterday, but I don't know if it's okay to say it again. In Genesis chapter 13, verse 14. I'm going to read Living, Living Bible again, and if there's need to, I'm going to go to King James. He said, after Lot was gone, the Lord said to Abraham, he said, look, as far as you can see, in every direction. I love that word. I've never read that there. For I'm going to give it to you and all your descendants. I'm going to give it to you and all your descendants. But that's not good enough. Let us read the King James Version of it. And the Lord said to Abraham, after the Lord was separated from him, he said, lift up now thy eyes and look up to the place where thou art. From the, to the north, to the south, to the east and to the west. Verse 15, very powerful. Look at what happened. If Abraham saw, look at what happened. If Abraham can see, look at what happened. If Abraham can take responsibility to have clarity of what God has made provision for him. Look at what happened in verse 14, 15, everybody. Genesis chapter 13, verse 15. For all the land, for all the land, for all the land, not some of it, not few of it, for all the land that you can see, I will give it to you and to your seed, not for a while, but forever. So total ownership is a function of clarity of purpose. That is the best way I can communicate it to you. Total ownership is the force of clarity of purpose. If you cannot see it, never think about it. It will never be yours. I see my good health. I can never be sick. I see my fortune. I can never be poor. You know what? Let me share my story with you. As at this time in 2012, I was still in Nigeria. As at this time in 2011, 10, I was still in Nigeria. But one day, I saw myself in America. You know, let me tell you something. There are some things God wants to do for people in your generation, in your family. Everybody's struggling. Your father, your mother, your sibling, every, including you. And you go to church, and you fast, you're praying. Most of the churches right now are fasting, they're praying. And yet, believers cannot see. And yet, God is telling you to start a business, but you are still praying about it. Write it down. Exitation will lead to detention. Exitate. H-E-S-I-T. <laughs> A-T. Exitate. Start hesitating. You will start going to detention. So, exitation equals detention. Exitation equals detention. Exitation equals detention. God is telling you to start a business. He has given you the idea. He has told you to go and share the vision so they can with provision is available through some people. But you are still fasting. Let me tell you something. Fasting and prayer can never take the place of action. 21 days fasting and prayer. 40 days fasting and prayer. If you fast and fast and you don't love your wife, you will still divorce. If you fast and fast and fast and you don't respect your husband, you will still divorce. There is a blessing in the realm of the spirit, but wisdom and action bring into reality. There are blessing in the realm of the spirit, but wisdom and action bring into reality. If you have the wisdom to know that you have to be at peace with God to hold your family, you will not know that you can love your wife regardless. The blessing of God are in the realm of the spirit. Only wisdom and action bring it to reality. Let it be written. If it is not written, it's not said. <laughs> if it is not written, it's not yours. <laughs> Let it be written. Let this day stand for you that wrote me a day to what saying towards your life. If you are listening to this anywhere around the world, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, it is not 
uh, 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 it is not accidental that you are here. Some of you right now, you don't know me and you want to click out. It's okay. But let me tell you something. Every word that is sent towards you will stand for or against you. At the end of this year, I mean the uh, 31st day of the month of December in the year 2020, 21, sorry. That day, that the fifth day of January will stand, the Rotimi said it to you. What can you see? Until you see it, you can never write it. And if you don't write it, it does not exist. Seeing is the first step in the school of, 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 of getting. If you cannot see it, you can never get it. I will say this again. I hope somebody is alive. The blessing of God are in the realm of the spirit. Only wisdom and action bring into reality. God told Jeremiah, what can you say? I'm asking you the same question around the world. On Instagram, on Facebook, on YouTube, what can you see? On that note, let me give you some definition of clarity. Number one, clarity is the ability to capture a real picture without confusion. Clarity is, the, is an ability. If you don't have it, you don't have it. Ability to capture the reality. Sorry, to capture a real picture without confusion. Number two, reality. Uh, sorry, clarity. Clarity. I'm giving the definition of clarity. Number one, clarity is the ability to capture the real picture without confusion. Number two, clarity is the capacity to know in details what you want without doubt. I love that. Let me tell you something. If you don't know what you want, people will sell to you what you don't want. I hope somebody gets that. I hope that clicks in your heart. I hope it clicks in your mind. I hope it shakes your being. I hope it moves you to action. That what? That clarity is the capacity to know in detail what you want without any doubt this is me and no devil can change my mind okay are you ready number three i'll give you the definition number two again i'll somebody catch it on time the best way to remember something is to say it loud and when you say it it registers in your subconscious mind then when it's time for your hand to type it it comes back you can't just type while you hear. You have to say it into your heart or your mind. Number one, ability to capture the real picture without confusion is what I call clarity. Number two, clarity is the capacity to know in detail what you want without doubt. And number three, clarity is the force of assurance and certainty with unbeatable confidence. Nobody can beat you down. Unbeatable confidence, unstoppable confidence. Unstoppable confidence. I love that. The force of assurance. Hey, this is what I need to do. This is my provision. And when I do what I need to do, the provision is guaranteed. Let me tell you something. Real people start with the ending in mind. Real sower, sowed with the harvest in mind. Yes. Like I said, I'm not saying this to you to listen to me. I just say, hey, hear me. And at your time, you go and listen. You know, listening is active hearing for the purpose of doing. It's an active hearing people for the purpose of doing, but hearing is paying attention for the purpose of respect. <laughs> if you listen to me, it's because you want to do it. But I'm not saying you should do it. 
I don't want you to be a follower. I want you to be a student. I want you to go back home and wrestle with these definitions. I want you to go back home and fight with this. What is Roti be saying? Is it making sense? It's not. So be a student. Don't be a follower. Follower follow blindly, but student follow mindfully. Follower follow blindly, but student what? They follow mindfully. Help me to write it down, please. I'm ready for the first time. Follower follow blindly. Some, when people follow, if you are a follower, you never see what that person is doing wrong. It's another realm. Followership is stupidity. <laughs> wow. If you are not stupid, you cannot follow. That is why the reward of followership is far ahead of the world of the students. Followership is stupidity. Because if that person is right or wrong, you follow him. How do I know? Miriam and the other, uh, what's his name? The other brother of, no, of no, Moses, Aaron. Miriam and Aaron, they are both students. They are not followers. But Joshua was a follower of Moses. And guess what? Students will face judgment. But follower will be forgiven. And that's a, another ball game. Oh my God. How did I get there? Students versus followership. So this morning, wherever you are around the world, I don't want you to follow me. I want you to be a student. I want you to take the note and sit down and ask God, if you believe in God, and ask the universe, and ask yourself by wrestling, fighting, and reasoning by yourself. I, don't, I cannot think for you. Everything I'm sharing with you right now are the things that God gave to me. If I'm stupid, I will not do it for 219 days. It is not fake. It is real. Everything is on the internet. Go and check my teaching each day. It will never be the same. A different teaching because they are not my word. They are the word given to me. So you have a choice. So either be a follower or be a student. But I challenge you this morning that you should be a student, not a follower. Follower, follow blindly. Student, follow mindfully. Mindfully means you put your own reasoning to it. You wrestle. Where, the way I, where, where I meet my past with my present tense, you pick up those wrong and you make decisions for yourself. Oh, what I'm saying that does not make sense. You see it. But I'm telling you, out of the hundred things that I said, one percent of it is correct to you. Everything is corrected for me. It's corrected to those who followed me. But if I don't want you to be a follower, be a student. So I want you to get it while you are still dead. Because the consequence of getting it outside is too much. It's huge. Okay. Follow up. Follow blindly. But student follow mindfully. So develop your own. I'm just trying to tell you what the Lord is telling me to tell you today about clarity, about clarity, about clarity. So, number one, let me give you the definition again. Time has gone. I said, number one, the ability to capture the real picture without confusion is clarity. Number two, the capacity to know in details without, to know in details what you want without doubt is clarity. Number three, the force of assurance and certainty with Unbeatable, unstoppable confidence is clarity. Number four, the clarity is swimming in purity, assurance of purpose, and the possibility of life. That is a powerful definition right there. If you are not grown. If you are a baby, you might not catch it. Clarity is swimming in purity. If somebody look into you, somebody hear you, they can see that what you are saying is truth. Because you are not communicating from your mouth. You are communicating from your heart. And whatever that comes from the heart, transcend, goes, penetrates. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. The word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates into the bone. It's a divider of talk and the intent of the heart. It's swimming in purity. There is not a dabracadabra there. Clarity is when you say, hey, if somebody wake you up at 10, a, 
10 p.m. What do you want? You tell them what you want. If they, you say go back to sleep and they wake you up at 1, you will repeat the same thing with word for word. When they wake you up at 3, the same thing. Whatsoever you cannot say at any time in life, if not, you have not seen it. Swimming in purity, assurance of purpose, and the possibility of life. And that the knowing. Of the possibility of life. Wow. <laughs> you know, what I just said right now is that's not even where I wrote it in my notes. I just have to correct it. So swimming in purity, assurance of purpose, and knowing the possibility of life. That is clarity. Number, number five. Purity or clarity, sorry. Clarity is planting. Planting what you know and what you need to do with the empowerment of going all out without backing down. Knowing what you need to do. Knowing what you need to do. That is powerful. Knowing what you need to do. Correcting my notes. Knowing what you need to do with the empowerment of doing it without backing down. Let me tell you something. <laughs> if you understand success, go and meet him. Success is as a lot of pressure. If you have my number, on my WhatsApp, I'm doing a series I call What If It's True. And that series, if I can do it for 30 days, I'm going to put it on maybe ebook or something. What if it's true? That's what I call it. <laughs> so, clarity is knowing what you need to do with the empowerment of doing it without backing down. The one thing I put on my status on WhatsApp today is that get ready for yesterday, sorry. Get ready for the pressure of success. The Lord told me that two years ago. There is a pressure of success. There is a pressure of success. You know, a lot of people talk about, I want to make money, I want to get married. You want to get married and you don't know how to dress. There are two types of ladies. There are some ladies that they take out. There are some ladies that they take in. And how you talk, how you relate, how you dress will determine they will take you out or they will take you in. Ladies who they take out are the ladies that show all their cleavage, that expose their body. They take them to eat tree and they take them to bed and they, you know, disflower them. People, the girls that they take out are the girls who go to club. Because if you go to club, you go back in club. That is why people who know you in club will never take you in. Because they make you out, they will take you out. Your words, your conversation. If you are talking to a man, all you talk about is Brazilian hair. If you are talking to a man, all you talk about is your makeup. If you are talking to a man, all you talk about is your nail dude. If you are talking to a man, all you talk about is your hair dude. If you are talking to a man, all you talk about is how you, uh, you just want to eat, you want to drink, you want to go out. They will take you out. And after they take you out, you will pay back with your body. And there's another girl, another set of ladies that they take in. These are the wife materials. Then, if you talk to ladies like that, they will never invite you to their house. You guys can meet in church. You can meet in eatery. You can meet in restaurant. You talk. And when you are talking, she's not exposing her body. When you are talking, she's telling you, what do you do? When, when did you know the Lord? How long have you known the Lord? Who are the people that I can... I can ask this question from how many ladies have you dated? How many ladies have you slept with? What are your wrongs? What are the things that you have never told anybody that I need to know? What is it that you are expecting from a woman? What kind of husband do you want to be? How many children do you want? How do you want to raise your children? What are you envisioning for yourself in the next 5, 10, 20, 15 years? What is your future like? Tell me about prosperity. Tell me about posterity. Tell me about hard work. Tell me about vision. 
Tell me about saving. Tell me about financial freedom. Tell me about traveling around the world. Tell me your ministry. What are you doing? What about having side business? These are the questions that lady that they take in heart. Do you know why they have not proposed to you? <laughs> because all you talk about, oh, you can't be alone. You just want to watch movie. Ah, those who watch movie are always on the move. And if you are not sitting down to know what you want, you can never move anybody to action. Two type of ladies. Those that they take out and those that they take in. Who are you? <laughs> wow. 40 minutes into today's Talk to Life. I've challenged your heart. I've made you to look stupid because you are not stupid. I've given you words to change your life. But let me give you some nuggets of clarity. Number one, clarity is light. If you are clear about what you want, light simply means revelation. When I was in Nigeria in 2008, now, nah, nah, I can't picture the, I think it's 2009, I was in Christ Church in Dagada, Lagos, Nigeria. And Pastor Itwai Gudalo was still in the pastor there until a long time. He was preaching one day. That is when this clarity of a thing dawns on me. A man came to his office. He met with his secretary. And that man said, sir, I'm going to kill myself today. I am in need. And if the church cannot meet my need, today I will commit suicide. I will kill myself. And the church will be responsible. Immediately, the secretary ran to him and said, Sir, you can't kill yourself. That will look good on you. And besides, the Bible said, Thou shalt not kill. If you kill yourself, your blood will be upon yourself. The man responded. He said, Listen, I'm not talking about Bible. I'm talking about I'm in need of money. And if I don't make that money today, if I don't get that money today, that's it. So, another word for light is revelation. Let me put it there. So, this man said, you better call the pastor right now because I need money. I need money. Immediately, the man offered the man the drink. He said, I'm not drinking. I'm going to stand. He said, sit. He said, no. So, immediately, the secretary ran to go and meet Pastor Itua. He said, Pastor Itua, please, sir. There is a man outside waiting for you. This man said he will kill himself if he doesn't get the money that he needed. Immediately, Pastor Itua rushed outside. He met with this man. He said, sir, what do you want? And he said, pastor, I'm about to kill myself. He said, why? He said, I need money. I need very big amount of money. If I don't make this money today, hey, something is going to happen. And Pastor Itua said, how much do you need? He said, pastor, are you sure you can help me? He said, don't worry, God is able. God will help you. He says, Pastor, this money I need is so far. It's a big amount of money. He said, don't worry, God will do it. And immediately that that man keeps saying it's a big money, Pastor Izua was so afraid, he ran back to the office and called the secretary coming. He said, how much do we have in bank? He said, we have 150,000 naira. He said, how much do we have cash at hand? He said, we have 100. He said, 100 plus 150. He said, that is 250. He said, bring everything. They wrote a check of 150,000 naira, and they packed the 100,000 naira. So this man had a cash of 100,000 to give to the man who is, uh, was outside for him not to kill himself. And there's another check that is written for on him. Open check that he can go to the bank and cash immediately. So this man that was about to kill himself, 250,000 naira was waiting for him. And the pastor, it was prayed. He said, what happened? If this man prayed, asked for one million naira, I will tell him, please don't kill yourself. Take this amount of money. By Sunday, I will speak to the leader for them to gather money to give you the remaining. He said, if he asks for 500,000, I will give him 250 and I will ask him to come back again. And I will give him part of my own money. He said, if he asks for 250, then problem solved. Hear my story. Pastor Itwale took the cash. 
and take the check. Wrap it. I said, sir, tell me how much you need. And the man said, pastor, are you sure you can help me? He said, yes. He said, pastor, I need 40,000 naira. Did he hear me? He said, pastor, all I need is 40,000. And if I don't get it now, I'm going to kill myself. You are listening to me right now. Tell God, if you don't do what I want, I'm going to kill myself. He said, God, you are not my God if you don't do what I want. And the Lord asks you, from Matthew chapter 7, verse 7, he said, ask, seek, and knock. This guy the sum of 250,000 naira was provided for him. And all he could have was 40,000 naira. What a shame of belittling yourself. This morning I come to ask you, do you know what God has planned for you? Why are you asking for 14,000 when provision of 215,000 is made available for you. You are asking for a man to bless you, a man that will love you. And God said, no, let me bless you so you can love you. So when a man comes to your life, he's going to compliment you, not compete with you. Most of the things you are looking for, you have it. And God said, let me bless you. <laughs> 40,000 250,000 was waiting for this guy. This is real. If you ever know, I forgot that name of the church. Pastor, it was as his church right now, he left to redeem. Go to that church in VIA in Lagos and ask if this story is true or not. If you ever have access to Pastor Itua. Some of you that you are listening right now, like Rhoda Bonnet said, Jesus, Jesus, what? Exactly. And that same question goes to you today. What can you see that God can do? That is what you should ask. Let me tell you my story. Last year, my wife and I, we put a five-figure amount in dollar that we needed. Five-figure. And guess what? We made over 150% of that five figures. Still under five figures. And why I was preparing for this year, the Lord told me, he said, don't write six figures. He said, write seven figures in dollars. He said, that's what you're going to get. I was afraid. But when I remember that story, I said, God is able. Oh, somebody, I'm giving you an assignment, two assignments. Number one, stop exitating. Stop exitating. If you think about it too much, you will start thinking about it. You start thinking about it. We start thinking about it more. You are not the one to provide. You are the one to see. What you see, God provides for it. God said, I gave seed to the sower, bread to the eater, seed to the sower. My mentor led me to see that yesterday. Bread. To the eater. Seed to the sower. Bread to the eater. I'm, 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 I'm taking somewhere. Seed to sower. Bread to eater. Seed to sower. Bread to eater. Between seed and sower, and between bread and eater, which corn come first? Does the sower come first before seed, or does the eater come first before bread? The same mistake that I made yesterday. Some of you might made it, and because of time, I don't have that time to stay around. Seed does not come before a sower. Sower come before the seed. When you sowed, then God knows that you are ready to sow. 
it gives you more seed. If you know how to eat, God knows, hey, you are a gluten. Let me give you more food. Whatever God knows you with, that is the blessing he gives you. If you say, no, I just want to be eating. I don't want to be a channel. God said, that what you want? Take food. And you keep coming for more food. But if you are the one who sows seed, last year, I was giving, a, and we have four men to my wife at night, and we give them money monthly. And at, this, at November, October last year, the Lord is telling me, increase, double, increase, double. I said, what? He said, double the amount of money that you give them. I did not hesitate. And the Lord did it. We started again. I will say it again. What do you want? Some of you right now, all you could think about is one million naira. All you could think about is five million naira. Some of you right now, all you could think about is just a, you just want promotion of which God wants to give you a, God wants to make you the CEO of that business. All of you, all you could think of right now, you just have to have, you, you just want to marry, of which God wants to give you babies. All you could think about right now, you just want to buy a car, of which God wants to be the person selling cars. All you could think about is what you will soon get. But all you could see is what God will soon do. Everybody, all you could see, you could see, is what we God do. And all you could want to get is what you will soon get. Clarity. What can you see? See yourself that you are healed. And I pray to this morning that you are healed. See yourself that you are free from cancer, from tumor, from borrowing. And I say this morning that you are free from cancer. You are free from tumor and you are free from borrowing. As far as you can see, so the Lord we do. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, put it out there. God is able to do exceedingly. You don't serve a little God, you serve a big, 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 big God. Don't stop my God, don't belittle my God. That's not the God that you serve. The God that you serve can feed 5,000 with a meal. I mean, the God that you serve, he can feed the entire nation with nothing. I mean, the God that you serve can bring money out of fish. I mean, the God that you serve can make the entire world to serve you. God. Can we put it out there? Ephesians 3 verse 20. God is able to do not you. God is able to do. Not you. But you need to see first what God to do. Clarity of purpose. Bet reality. Is there any other way I can say it for you to get it? I'm not here to demand your money. I'm not here to demand anything. Now unto him that is able to do what? Exceedingly. No, baby, don't get that. Abundantly. Powerful words. Those two words separately can change your life. Exceedingly. Abundantly. He now had it with above all. Oh. Little Sundi bra. Jelly broke at his king to ba a ba kito kibaba izulu break in the scarabalat. Everybody, wherever you are, you are connected right now. Lift up your right hand and say, God, empower my head, open my heart, let my heart see. Empower my hands, open my heart, and let my eyes see. Let the scales that cover my eyes drop off. Let whatever cluster my eyes be drop off. Let my hands never be feeble. Empowerment of my hand, the clarity of the heart, and the open eyes. Open eyes. <laughs> Little soon get back. At, you know, people think I'm here to motivate. You are looking for followers. Forget about that. Forget about it. God has blessed me. I know what I'm talking about. God has blessed me. God has blessed me. God has blessed me. This is not faking. I'm telling you the truth. Exceedingly 
abundantly above all. Exceedingly, abundantly above all. Exceedingly, abundantly above all. The power of clarity. The power of clarity. The power of clarity. This is not fake news. This is not CNN. This is not Fox News. This is direct word from heaven. That you can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, and have what you want to have. If you know that all that is remind, the, required of you this day is to see, is to see, is to see, is to see. Those words need to come, exceedingly come, abundantly come, and above all. Think about it, print it, and put it everywhere around your house. On the 20th of August, I see I've been right here. I did an interview that I've been waiting for five years. I've been waiting for that interview for five years. And I have it here. And the Lord did it. What can you see? It is not up to God. It is up to you. Can I round it up this morning? By showing you five ways to get clarity. Number one, listen with your heart. Listen with your heart. Don't forget, last year, I wrote down five figures in U.S. dollar, and we got it. And the Lord told me this year, write seven figures. You know, people have talked about six figures. The Lord told me, write seven figures. And trust me that you're going to do it. That is it. That is it. So listen with your heart. Don't forget what I told you, that I told you. Empowerment of the heart. The clarity of the heart and open eyes. Every the prayer there. The Lord has to empower your hand to get the work done. He has to give you clarity of heart. Because what you cannot see with your heart, you can never seize with, seize with your with your hand. And you can never see it with your heart. What you cannot be empowered with, what you cannot seize with your heart, you can never seize it with your hand. You have to see it with your heart, see it with your eyes, then you can seize it with your hand. So, how can you get clarity? Get clarity by listening with your heart. As I'm talking to you right now, some of you are saying, what, 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 what rubbish is he talking about? Get away from here. <laughs> you know what? I don't care what you think. I'm not here for you. I'm here because God said I should be here. You don't know things. You know, a time is coming that what you are listening to for free right now, you will not be able to see it again. If I were you, you would download this video and keep it. Because very soon, when we clock one year of Talk to Life, that's the 365 days, all the video on YouTube about Talk to Life will be removed. We are turning into yearly impartational devotion. We come up with the video in a writing form, and you're going to mass produce it to the world. So we are using this to test it. Eh? Everything is recorded. So if I were you, I would download this and listen to it. If I were you, you would send email to my new Don TV. If I were you, you would connect with Rotimi Adedoku on Instagram at I am Rotimi Adedoku. If I were you, I would follow Rotimi on Facebook because most of the something you are having on YouTube right now will be surely deleted soon. So listen with your heart. Number two, understand with your mind. Let your heart listen. Let your mind understand it. Let your spirit, number three, let your spirit be connected with it. And follow with your entire being, number four. Follow through it. Follow through it. Now it's coming very strong again in my spirit. Stop hesitating. Stop hesitating. Some of you right now, stop hesitating. Some of you right now, God tell you something, but you are you dealing dealing about it. Stop hesitating. When God said step, just step. Peter, don't hesitate. 
He walked on water. Elijah don't hesitate. He take double portion. Stop hesitating. Number one, listen with your heart. Number two, understand with your mind. Number three, be connected with your spirit. Number four, follow with your total being, your entire life. And number five, move without hesitation. You know what? It's almost six years. We started just almost five. Guess what? It's five. One hour already. That's all I got for you today. Please, if you are blessed by everything that you have heard this month, please type here, what have you heard? What have you heard, guys? What have you heard? What have you heard? I want to know. What have you heard? The power of clarity. The power of clarity. What have you heard? I love to dance. You gotta be happy. Revelation does not come to people who are moody. I'm an happy guy. I love love. And I'm very, very serious. When I'm serious, nobody come near. And when I'm laughing, everybody can come near. So today, we are finished. Somebody say, hey. Christy Bear said, blessing. I am blessed. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh my God, what a mistake. It is total being. What is an enter being? What is mean? Follow with your total being. with words of wisdom and how to use the power of clarity I understood with me with my mind and listen Jadot Kilo said hello hello Jadot <laughs> please I want you guys to follow me at Roti Miyadet sorry I am Roti Miyadet can you be written please don't forget those five words. Don't forget the five words. Listen with your heart. Understand with your mind. Be connected with your spirit. Follow with your total being. And move without hesitation. Don't think about it. When God said move, move. Everything is available. <laughs> but you have to be what? You have to be possible. You have to be positive. Wow, 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 wow. I'm so happy that you guys are blessed. Please, please, please. I want you to please subscribe if you have not, if you are yet to subscribe. Please subscribe, like, and if you are uh, Jadok, uh, Kristen, Bree, Rhoda, Bonnet, please, I want you guys to please share this with somebody. Share this. Oh, we're going to upload it because this one is a, it's a continuous message. So, 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 please follow me on Instagram. I'm on Instagram live right now. And I can even bring you online for people to hear your voice if you're anywhere around the world. I can invite you if you're on Instagram. We gotta go. Let me pray for you. Every morning after I finish teaching, I pray. And I'm, today will not be an exemption. Today, I pray that you will never be blind to your future again. Everything that makes people not to see, I separate such a thing from your being. May the hand of God come upon you. May the eye saw that makes people to see clearly into the future and know the plan and purpose of God for their lives. For their lives. May those clarity come upon you. Right now, I launch you into the full step of Abraham. And I pray Genesis 13, 14, and 15 over your head. 
that as you take responsibility to see the land that you see, your future that you can see, the business that you can see, the excess abundance that you can see, God will give them to you. I decree upon you this morning that blessing will locate you, that men will serve you, that people will support you. You will not go down again. You will not go down again. If people fail in January, it will not be you. If people mix it in February, it will not be you. If people are confused in March, it will not be you. April, May, June will bring support. July, August, September will bless you. I mean, October, November, December, it will be a supportive month to you. 2021, it's a walkover year for you. God will give you speed for results. In the mighty name of Jesus, so shall it be. Celebrate, rejoice. Celebrate, rejoice. Celebrate, rejoice. Gain speed. In the name of Jesus, so shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Yes, I got to go. Please know that you are designed for royalty and you cannot afford to settle for less. Help me to put it out there. Don't ever settle for less. You don't have money now doesn't mean you don't have money. Money in the pocket is not the same thing as the money in the bank. Rich people don't carry money around, but they have money. So if you don't have money in your pocket right now, it does not mean you are poor. It means money is coming. You have money in the bank of heaven. So never settle for less. Know that you are designed for royalty and you cannot afford to settle for less. Once again, this is Talk to Life. Early money, unlimited inspiration with Roti Miyadidoku. This platform is called Talk to Life because it's designed for you to know that the things God has provided for you are much more the things that you need to do. So provision, when it comes with responsibility, it becomes desire, not desire. I celebrate you. And I celebrate with you. I will catch you up tomorrow, 7 o'clock Nigerian time and 12 a.m. Central time, 6 a.m. and uh, uh, um, England time. And we shall meet again with another powerful episode of Talk to Life. Early morning, unlimited inspiration with routine and people. Be blessed.